Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of For the People. This is the 25th anniversary edition of the game from Mark Herman and GMT Games. This is the big box version, massively updated. It's got a pounded board, it's got a brand new thick box, and it is pretty, pretty darn cool. Very popular game. Obviously, it's been around for 25 years and been highly successful. It's a card-driven game. Um, it is uh, mediocre complexity, five, it's not a big deal. Solo suitability out of the box is rated a six out of nine, so that's pretty good, but this will play with the with the GMT solo system, uh, the Stuka Joe system, and they've released when, you know, in the, uh, I think it's in the first pack, they released the uh, instruction card for playing for the people and I assume that that works with the upgraded version as well but first and foremost let's take in the box see what you get inside all right so you got a very artistic um, kind of like a watercolor go in here with a kind of a fuzzy background you do have you can kind of see some soldiers here and you've obviously got a very stern picture of Lincoln on the front and then of course we got uh, Atlanta's favorite hero uh, William Tecum William Tecumseh Sherman he was a he was a big fan of Georgia and then on the other side we have Ulysses S Grant fun fact the S means nothing they anyway, must tell you that Simpson is wrong. He just made up an initial when he was filling out his West Point application, I believe is how the story goes. So, um, a little disappointing we don't have at least Robert E. Lee on here somewhere. But anyway, since this is a Civil War game, I think you'd be there. But oh, there we go. We got him on the inside. So, we start out with our rule book the 2024 edition of Rules of Play. And then you got the original artwork of Grant and Lee and regulars in the inventory. All right, and this is a 48 page rule book on GMT's wonderful matte finish stock. And it is very dense, I would say though. But well, let's take this back. Yeah, it says rules of play, but that's interesting. Uh, we gotta get to page five. And we've got an extensive example of play. So how's this one working here today? Let's see. So we start out with the introduction, start out with a glossary, examples of the counters. They show you what that's about. And then, and then we go straight into an example of play. So that's kind of interesting because you gotta just like learn as you read how it works. Got definitions, like I said, the glossary explains different things. And it goes straight into like just walking you through how to play the game. So that's kind of cool, actually. It's like, look, just sit down. It's kind of like watching a video of uh, how to play. I mean, you don't know anything that's going on in the box, but you just kind of go through it and it explains it. So then when you read the rules, it makes a little more sense. So that's, it's, it's interesting. I have never played this one. I have never had this one. Maybe because I didn't get it before the Stuka Joe thing came out, and then I didn't get it after. So now I have it. So. Um, if you own, uh, I will say, I'm going to say this up front, if you own the original, you can get a upgrade set that is just the box, the mounted board, and I believe the rules. So it looks exactly the same. So you can basically take your original and put it in here, and then you get the mounted map board. So we'll have a link to that in the video as well as a link to this one. So, all right. So anyway, going through the rules here, let's see. Um... Got the credits, got the setting up the game starts on page 11 and rules go to about 39 it looks like because then you start the scenarios 1861, 62, 63, 64 and then the campaign game. So it looks to be about maybe 28 pages of rules and then the scenario. So this is like the, the scenario book and the rule book, or the playbook and the rule book all in one. So it does look very dense. There's not a lot. There are some graphics, but not a lot. Like usually this is mostly text and you one example graphic here. Uh, 
Alright. We'll take a look at one of the scenarios here. Strategic Will. So we got Abe and Jeff Davis. And here we go, the scenario. 1861. Set up for 1861. Scenario is in section two. Oh, setting up the game section. Okay, section two. So you go back to the beginning. It'll tell you how to set up. And then it tells you everything, where to put the units over there. Uh, oh, excuse me, the 1861 scenario is the default one. So at the beginning, when I told you how to set up the game, that would be setting up for just the 1861 scenario. Then the 1862 scenario tells you where to put the units. 1863 does the same thing, 1864. And then the campaign game is starts with 1861 setup begins on the spring 1861 game turn and concludes on spring 1865 unless an automatic campaign game victory is met and this tells you all the different things strategic will confederate resources winning the campaign game so i guess you just continue to play them in succession so that's the rule book then we have charts and tables got two copies of that Double-sided, GMT glossy stock, combat results, DRMs, movement summary, union reinforcements. Then we have a single copy of the strategy card list that lists all of the apparently 130 cards that are in the game. And it shows you they're neutral, they're for both Confederate Union, and also it's color-coded, so it's got UC or P. But also you can tell you got blue for Union, gray for Confederate, and white for neutral. And on the back we have the 1861 scenario quick setup display so you know where to put everything. And then we've got our counters. And there are two, wow, only two sheets of counters. They are half inch, I believe, counters. Yeah. They are half inch counters and they are not pre-rounded so you will need an organ laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder the right tool for the job unless you're only playing with half inch if you never use anything greater than half inch then you can do a two millimeter but if you're doing more than one if you're doing larger counters 2.5 will do these just fine as well so you don't need to own two of them so here we obviously got our union strength points one three five Two, four, six. So they go up to six, and then uh, our Confederate strength points are brown with gray soldiers on them. And we clearly have our different generals and our armies, which you can mark. And then fortifications. We got some naval units here as well. And then the second sheet is only a half sheet of counters. So it's not very counter dense, and obviously these are going to be control markers. It's interesting that they have a lot of Confederate markers. The Confederate on the front, USA on the front for a few of these others. Then you flip it over and they're just the opposite. So why they didn't just make them all Confederate on the front, USA on the back, or USA on the front, Confederate on the back, I don't know. And then we do have some, so these are white with that, and then there's some that are, you've got a gray with a Confederate flag and gray with a, so these may be for control, uh, victory point hexes, maybe. And then these are blue with a USA flag on the front and then Union controlled state on the back. So that's interesting. And then some forage markers, destroyed markers, resource spaces are destroyed. And then trains are, trains are dead. So those are the counters. And then we've got our beautiful mounted map board. We'll take a look at that separately in just a minute and it says it's double-sided too and we've got gmt's legendary bagel bags to help you store it if you don't use an organ i mean if you don't use a gmt tray um, which i think with this you'd have to remove your insert if you had a gmt tray and we've got two dice and as predicted you have a blue die and a gray die let's see who wins it all settles on this the confederates won the first battle five to two union will come back I've seen how it ends. All right, so then we've got decks of cards, and these are these are interesting. 
So these are these are small decks. We said there's 130, so there's probably 65. So there's about 32 or so in each one of these. 65 would be half. Uh, well, actually, there's 40, and there's 41, and 101, and 71. So got about 30. Yeah, 30, 30, and 30, and then this one has 40. What's interesting is GMT nowadays tends to do like two big stacks of cards, and these are actually subdivided into small little decks. We'll take a look at one at random here. We will pick this deck and open it up. Just want to get a sample of the quality here. And as usual, GMT cards are very good, very thick. Probably going to sleeve them anyway, just to make shuffling that much easier. So you got, obviously, Honest Abe in two places. And then we've got our uh, events. So. Tennessee Confederate. Confederate immediately places two strength points in any friendly controlled space in Tennessee with a uh, LOC, line of control. Both SPs are replaced in the same space. The, uh, so the SPs cannot be placed in a pro-union space or one occupied by a union SP. So this is a gray, so it's obviously a union card. This is blue and gray, so it's either. And if the event gets played, so you play them for points like any card driven game. So if the union player has this, they can play it for points, I believe. Uh, and then the uh, event uh, may or may not occur. I don't know the exact rules on this one. Different different games are different. So Kansas submitted the union is obviously a union event. Food shortage. CSA recognizes Kentucky, Missouri, Maryland, and Delaware. So this sounds cool. So again, very good, very good quality, and you get 130 cards. All right, so let's take a quick look at the map board. It is double-sided, and what they've done, as they've done with a lot of these deluxe editions, is to give you one side that is the original artwork. And if you've played the game before, it's the original artwork on the uh, paper map that originally came with it. I'm only seeing half of it here. But there's the whole thing. So this is the original, the original artwork. You get the states defined and you get the starting spaces defined, so on and so forth. And the starting locations for the 1861 scenario are marked on the map. But then, as the deluxe edition, you've got this map that's kind of designed more contemporary to the period. Right, so it's just a, a nicer artwork, kind of relief map, shows the uh, topography of the land and got the, the artwork is a little more, um, like I said, thematic. How they've written Kentucky. You've got the nice little badge for For the People and some really cool stuff on here. The charts, it's just, it's just a nicer, I mean, it's exact same content. You even have the starting locations all marked. But it gives you a choice of which side you can play, and if you if you spill a soda on one side, you always have the other side, right? So anyway, it's, uh, for it's an eight-panel map, so it's going to be uh, uh, let's see what uh, 30, 34 by twenty-two map mounted though, and again, very beautiful, nice border. Um, Got your Confederate strengths, your Union strengths. Obviously, they're on the north side and the south side. Uh, and naval, got naval charts over here. You know, nice shading on the coastline and the ocean. And I just, I mean, I, you know, having never played this, I'm already in love with this side of the map. So I'll probably start with this one in home state of Georgia right there. So anyway, I'm gonna fold this back up and we'll recap everything you get in the box. All right, so if you pick up a copy of the For the People 20th Anniversary Edition, the full thing, if you want just the upgrade because you already own For the People and just want the map in the box, you can get that edition, which is barcode 2402. But if you pick up the full thing, you're going to get the 130 event cards. You're going to get 
two dice. And the Union came back and won the second battle, six to two. You're gonna get a bag of bags for organizing your counters. You're gonna get two, you're gonna get that map board we looked at, the double-sided map board. It's got the original art and the beautiful new art. You're gonna get the one and a half sheets of half-inch counters, strength point markers, one copy of the strategy card list, as well as a 1861 scenario setup, two copies of the single uh, double-sided uh, charts, command tables, for one for each player. The 48-page Rules of Play 2024 edition, and the nice, beautiful three-inch box with the beautiful artwork. And that is everything in For the People, game designed by Mark Herman, the 25th anniversary edition from GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!